You've been considering the 21st character of the Greek alphabet, phi, and how it relates to math and nature. Now, phi is not only a letter, but also an irrational number which starts 1.618 without ever repeating. You can also write phi as 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. This number is called many things and may be referred to as the golden ratio, golden mean, divine proportion, golden number, and many more. It is apparent from these names that this number is impressive, but why? First, let's look at what a ratio is. A ratio is the number of times one number contains another. For example, here I have five Black Eyed Susans and three Queen Anne's Lace. The ratio of Black Eyed Susans to Queen Anne's Lace is five to three and can be written like this. Say you take a string or line and want to find where you can divide the line so that the longer portion of the line divided by the shorter portion equals the entire length of the line divided by the longer portion of the line. To make this simpler looking, let's name the long part A and the short section B. Now the formula is A over B equals A plus B divided by A. So what you are looking for is a ratio of A to B that is equal to the ratio of the sum of A and B to A. This here is equal to 5 because we want to find the perfect or golden ratio that will work. Let's do the math to simplify this. A plus B divided by A is equal to A over A plus B over A. Now A over A is equal to 1. B over A is the inverse of A over B, which we have over here. We know that A over B is equal to 5, so that means that B over A must be equal to the inverse of 5. To get the inverse of a number, you divide 1 by the number, so 1 over 5. Therefore, we now have phi equals 1 plus 1 over phi. This is interesting because phi is defined in terms of itself. We could instead write this as 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over, and it just goes on. Now you wonder, what does this ratio have to do with nature? You can find the golden ratio in animals. For example, this ant, if I look at it really closely, might have the golden ratio in the length of its body. Other small creatures with three body parts might also have the golden ratio. Here is a photo of a wasp. I can measure it, and look, the sections of its body are close to the golden ratio. The golden ratio also has a relation to spirals, and, not surprisingly, these spirals which follow the golden ratio are called golden spirals. Grab some graph paper and a pencil, or open a drawing program on a computer. In part three of this series, we talked about Fibonacci numbers. Those numbers will appear again here. Draw a one by one square, and right beside it, draw another one by one square. Now, draw a two by two square like this. Next comes a three by three square here. The length of this side is five, so we draw a five by five. Then comes an eight by eight, 13 by 13, and 21 by 21. Can you see the golden ratio in these rectangles? And if we divide 21 by 13, we get 1.615, which approaches the golden ratio. If you have enough paper or space on your computer screen, you can keep going, always adding a new Fibonacci number. Time for the spiral. Take your pencil or cursor and draw a curved line connecting the opposite corners of your smallest box, like so. Then draw through the other one by one box in the same manner. You should have a semicircle shape. Do the same with the 2x2 two two box. Keep going like this and try to keep the bend smooth. It may take a few tries to get a nice curve, but that's fine. This golden spiral is a logarithmic spiral because it constantly grows larger. An interesting property of this spiral is that the scale of the spiral is not set, meaning that no matter how large or small it is, it will always look the same. You can see these golden spirals in nature. One of the most famous examples is the Nautilus shell. If you have some wire, you can carefully bend it with some pliers into the shape of the golden spiral. Be careful not to poke yourself. Now you can measure the spirals on plants and see if the spirals are similar to the golden spiral. If you do not have wire, you can cut out your paper spiral or take photos of plants and use an image of a spiral to measure on the computer. Let's look at some different plants. Here is a sunflower. You can sort of see how the spiral lines up. This Queen Anne's lace seems a bit spirally too, but with all the blossoms, it is difficult to see. This pinecone might not quite match, but this thistle has a nice spiral. This little plant and larger plant have a spiral leaf arrangement, and hen and chick and cactuses are also plants that often have five-shaped spirals. 
so get outside and see what other plants you can find. Bingo up.